Neil Gershenfeld, you've used this term, the Internet of Things. What does that mean? Um, so, I carry circuit boards in my pocket. We all <laughs> carry circuit <laughs> boards. Of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> Doesn't everybody? Right. So the, uh, the Actually, the answer is yes, they do, because they have mobiles. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Right. Yeah. But they don't look at them. <laughs> That's true. They don't take um, the chips They out. don't admire them. Um, uh, th th <laughs> th uh, this is a one dollar... Geeks are so cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this is a one dollar web server. So it, 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 it's a complete website, it's about a dollar, and it can communicate over most anything. You could blink lights or make sounds. And uh, I'm not a network engineer. I was developing these. I'm a physicist and I was connecting things to networks and I couldn't get the stuff I needed from companies like Cisco. And so I did a bunch of tricks to honor the principles of the internet, but connect them to little devices. This Yay. is a paper <laughs> Good. I wrote um, that I think helped launch the notion of an internet of things. And it was written with a student, Rafi, who now runs Twitter's platform. And then maybe the least known, but maybe the most interesting of the original internet architects, Danny Cohen. And he was the one who separated what became the internet protocol IP from what was above it. And Danny got really interested in our projects. He thought our projects weren't interesting, but the devices were. Mm. And this paper articulated to connect the internet to devices, you need to do some things differently. Like light bulbs don't watch broadband movies. Right. So you want to actually slow the data down to communicate more inefficiently, and it turns out that has lots of technical savings. But you want to respect the internet architecture. So this was a paper about how do you change the architecture but connect it to devices. Now why it matters is we found, for example, buildings in the US use three quarters of the electricity, a third of it is consistently wasted, and it's wasted not just for inefficiency, like lights on when there's uh, room light coming in, but just deficiency. It turns out buildings are basket cases. They're full of like pumps running the wrong way and heating and cooling fighting. And it's there because you can't do anything about it. Now, the diatribe is the internet of things has taken off. You hear it all over. China has a big national program. But what almost everybody is talking about is the bitnet of things. Meaning? Bitnet died. Bitnet was mainframe to mainframe, and you had a terminal. Mm -hmm. And in, in phones, there used to be um, phone switches that ran the network, and you had right. a dumb telephone. What Vint and colleagues taught us is you push the state at the edge of the network, right. so the application is built um, where the data resides. You don't build it into the internal architecture. Exactly. Now, so here we showed for a dollar you can connect the internet to anything, for healthcare to manage seniors' medication, for energy efficiency, for all of those purposes. But almost all of the projects called Internet of Things have a sign bit exactly backwards. What the utilities, what the hospitals, what everybody actually wants to do is take the devices and connect dumb devices to the Internet where the state is remote. And so to go back to the building example, if your radiator's on but your room's too hot so you have to open the window, in the Internet of Things, your window can talk to your radiator and fix it. In the BitNet of Things, there's a mainframe right. somewhere else right where you don't get access to it. The beauty of the internet is you could invent eBay or Google or any of those things at the edges. You didn't need anybody's permission. So the internet of things is the, means everything, every light, every sensor can be connected to the internet. Huge implications for healthcare, for food, for energy. But for it to work, the state has to be in the edges of the architect. Right. It has to respect the architecture of the internet, and almost everything out there isn't. So the, the lesson you should take from this is you should ask to own your devices. When, when somebody wants to connect the things around you, you should have control over what they do. They shouldn't be dumb devices to connected to something far away. That sounds obvious. Yeah. We have decades of experience, but we're replaying that same battle again. All right. Their destination and how do you feel? Would you like for everybody to join in? <laughs>